Hello there. Today I am going to be making a pair of moccasins. The design I'm going to be using is called pucker toe. It's a very simple design that doesn't require any mathematics or complex measurements. The first step is to take stock of our material. This is a piece of modern tanned buffalo skin. Shoes need to withstand a lot of wear and tear, so you want to use relatively thick leather. Now I'm going to wrap the leather around my foot to get the measurements. You want to try this in a number of spots to find the most efficient place to cut the leather. Remember that you need to be able to get two of these panels out of your leather. Now that I've found my spot, I'm going to take the proper measurement. I'm making a pair of winter moccasins here, so I'm doing it in thick socks. If you're making summer moccasins, you want to do this barefoot. I'm folding the leather over the top of my foot and marking where the center seam would be. Chalk is good for marking as it comes off easily and doesn't stain your leather. The drawback is that it wipes off easily. Now I'm going to fold the tips of the leather in around my toes. You want the tip of the leather to fold back to just past where your big toe joins your foot. If things don't line up properly, you're going to have to move your foot slightly. Now, keeping my foot in the same place, I'm going to make a wide tracing of it. Just using the curve of my foot to show where the edge should be rounded off. You don't want to be too precious about getting it perfect. Now I'm going to fold all the edges in. Ideally, that white line that you just made should all overlap at the same spot just past your big toe. My line needed some slight modification, so I'm just doing that now in a firmer stroke. Something that struck me in editing is that a beginner might want to mark where the foot was sitting when it was right, so that if you remove your foot you can put it back where it belongs. What I'm doing now is holding the front in place and then pinching the leather just behind the heel. I'm going to keep it pinched and I'm going to make a little mark in chalk where the pinch was. Ideally, this mark will be the back of the moccasin. Now I'm making a tentative horizontal line, square with the rest of the piece. There's an old carpenter's mantra of measure twice, cut once. Before you make any cuts, you want to double check, make sure everything still lines up. If everything lines up, then it's time to cut the first corner off. Don't cut the whole thing out yet, just the one corner. Take your time, cut it properly. Now I'm going to fold it over to see if my newly cut edge conforms with my existing line. It doesn't, so I'm going to remark it. I should have also erased the old line, but I can remember which one to cut. A cutting wheel is good for the straight sections. It should be noted though that I'm not cutting the back and it's still connected to the leather piece. Now I'm going to mark the tip with a pencil and then make another mark every finger's width. You want to do this all along the rounded section until it gets flat again. If you're using thinner leather, you might want the marks to be a little bit closer together. If you're using thicker leather, the inverse. Now that I've got all my marks, I should make sure that the last ones line up. Now I'm going to punch out all of the holes. The only thing you want to make sure of here is that you don't go too close to the edge. Now all the holes are punched, it's time to start sewing. I'm sewing with a strip of thick leather. A shoelace might be better for this stage as it's glossy and goes in and out. They've also got that hard cap which would be a bit like a needle. i got to take this apart anyway so it wouldn't matter that the shoelace is ugly. At this stage, you're not sewing anything together, you're just putting the string in and out of all of the holes. Once you get to the end, you're going to pull it as tight as it'll go, and all going well, the toe should cinch together like a bag. Now I'm just going to poke out the inside to make things look right. There we go. And then I'm going to tie the two ends of the string together. Then I put my foot in to make sure everything still lines up. A gap on the top of the foot isn't the end of the world, you can easily fix this by the shape of the vamp. This one looks pretty good. It's most important that the heel lines up. If that mark isn't correct, you want to replace it. Now you want to make sure that the two edges of your mark line up. Now that all that's done, it's time to take it apart. Bit of wasted effort, but what have you. I'm going to use this piece as my pattern for the other moccasin. I want the two to be symmetrical after all. I'm going to make sure that the heel mark is square and I'm going to cut it off. Now I'm going to use it to mark out the other moccasin. You want to place it flesh side to flesh side so that you get a mirror image and not two that are identical. Once you've got it marked, you can safely cut it out. Now I'm going to mark the holes for the heel seam. You want to do this from both ends to ensure that you have an even number of holes. If you have to cheat with the spacing, do it at the center. It doesn't matter so much there. Then you go over and punch all of the holes. A mistake I made is that you don't necessarily want to punch the two holes immediately adjacent to the center two. Now that those holes are punched, it's time to start sewing it together properly. For the end of the seam, rather than tying a knot like you would with string, you're going to cut a tiny slit in the thread and then thread it through itself. Sort of like a slip knot, but without any knots. Now you're ready to start sewing. 
Same thing as you did before, in and out, all along the edge. Except this time you're going to tighten it as you go. You want to make sure that it's good and tight by the time you get to the end. Once you get to the end, you're going to need a great big sewing needle. You don't strictly need one, but it makes this next step so much easier. You're going to put it through the hole on the other side of the piece, then pull the two sides tight together. Now you're going to sew up towards the toe. You want to sew in the valleys where the leather has puckered, looping it not through the holes, but underneath the existing leather string. As I mentioned, this is a pain to do without the needle. It's a pain even with the needle. You want to make sure that the string doesn't get caught on the tops of the ridges. Oh, looks like I broke my string. Okay. This is good. I'll show you how to splice two pieces of string together. First you take your new piece, and then you make a little slit in one end. Then you do the same thing on your old piece where it broke. It's a good idea to try breaking your new piece, just to see if your leather's bad or not. There's no sense splicing on a weak piece. Okay, there we go. Little hole. So the first part, we put the old piece of leather through the new piece of leather. And then we put the new piece of leather through the old piece of leather. If you're having a hard time pulling it through, you might want to consider using a needle for this stage. There we go, that's got it. And then we pull it all tight so that the two slip knots sit together. And there you go, that's how you splice. Now where were we? You want to sew underneath the old string. You want to sew in the valleys where it is puckered. You want to just go in a zigzag up towards the tip. You want to keep it as tight as you can and make sure that the string doesn't get snagged on any of the ridges. It'll get tighter as you get towards the toe. If it gets too tight and you can't hold onto the needle anymore, just grab a pair of pliers and use that to sew. Once you get to the very tip, you're going to turn around and go back down the center. You want to loop it between the stitches you just made going up. Pliers are very helpful here. Once you finish, you're going to loop the end through your two last holes. Don't tie it or cut it, you're still going to need that thread. And now the toes of the moccasins are done. Time to move on to the heels. You want to start the thread in exactly the same way, loop it through the top too, and then loop it through itself. Then you're going to sew down towards the heel. You want to use a cross stitch here. So go diagonally on the outside and then horizontally on the inside. The seam will feel kind of loose on the first pass, but you're going to go over it again on the way back up. That'll tighten things up nicely. When you get to the bottom, the thing to do is to fold the corner up. Then you sew the last hole to the third to last hole. I'm having some difficulty explaining this, and my footage didn't pick it up properly, so I'm just going to put in a photo of what it looks like on another pair of moccasins. It might actually be better to do this part with waxed thread or sinew rather than leather cord. Sewing with leather requires big holes that water can get into easily. Once you've got the corner pinned up, then it's time to go back up towards the cuff. So it's the same thing as you did on the way down, but on the other side this time. If you did it right, it should make a series of X's all the way up the seam. Again, when you finish, don't tie off the string or cut off the excess. And there we go, that's the lowers of the moccasin done. If you wanted to, you could just add some ties and call it a day, but we're going to add some uppers to this. The cuff is just a simple rectangle. I'm making mine 6 inches as I want to be able to wear these in snow. Most of them were about 3 inches. Again, measure it on your body before you cut it. The real reason I chose 6 inches was because it's the width of my ruler and I could get two of them out of my piece. Here I'm just going to trim it so both edges are symmetrical. It would be easier to make them square, but the contours of the leather are visually interesting. And again, I double check that it's long enough before I use it as a pattern for the other cuff. Now I'm going to mark and punch the holes using the same method as I used before. One, two, three, when you're joining two separate pieces of leather, it's important to count the holes to make sure everything will line up. 14, 15, 16, 2, 3, Knowing this, I can punch four, exactly the right amount of holes in the other piece. 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. Now I'm going to sew it all together using a standard running stitch. I'm going to sew using the excess cord from the heel seam. This is why you want to leave it on. On the way back, I'm going to loop the cord underneath each old stitch. This isn't quite as strong, but it's a lot faster and I like the way it looks. 
If you run out of cord, you just splice on another section using the aforementioned method. When you've finished your seam, you just loop the cord back on itself and try and tuck it underneath something. It doesn't need to be knotted. So now that the cuffs are sewn on, all we're going to need is a vamp for the center. I'm just going to measure the gap at the front in the simplest way possible. The gap is a little under three fingers, so I'm going to make a piece a little over three fingers. This scrap is a little over three fingers, so I'm just going to cut this off square. The length is about twice what I need, so I'm just going to cut it in half and hope for the best. The top edge would look better rounded than square, so I'm just going to round this off. Mark the edge of the rounded section, mark the center, and then just round it off using the curve of my hand. Easy as pie. I'll put a couple of holes in the lower to attach the vamp. I'm not going to want to leave the bottom of the vamp square either, so I'm just going to hold it in place and get an idea of how I have to cut it. I want the bottom to have three angles on it, a little tiny square at the tip and then two diagonals. There you go. And three holes per side. Then you just sew it on using the leftover string from the toe seam. So here are the finished moccasins. One of them turned out very well, the other one slightly less good than that. These are winter moccasins, so they're sort of an ankle boot at this point, and they can be turned up and lashed to make them into sort of a high boot. The only real difference between winter and summer moccasins is the height of the cuff, so these techniques will hold true regardless of what you're making them for. Though pucker toe moccasins aren't the most attractive, they're very simple and quick to make. These ones only took me about two and a half hours. One final piece of advice before I end is that if you make them too small, don't be dismayed. You just have to get them wet and wear them while they dry and they'll stretch to your feet. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.